Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Emine Şeyma Kutluk from Istanbul Technical University. Um, today, I would like to talk about my recent work uh, named Cosmological Perturbations Out of the Box. So uh, it's a standard assumption of many cosmological perturbation work uh, that the perturbations on the cosmological background vanish at uh, spatial infinity. A crucial place where this assumption is used is the scalar vector tensor decomposition. So taking up a, a spherical topology, uh, a vector on uh, R3 decomposes, for example, as a gradient part uh, and the curl part. But this assumption does the decomposition no longer holds if one is interested in uh, non-vanishing behavior. An example of this can be uh, asymptotic symmetry discussions where fields do not vanish trivially or any scenario where one would like to consider a patching of the space. In such cases, uh, one can study perturbations on what is called manifolds with boundary instead of a, a regular manifold without a boundary to allow for more general boundary conditions. And for anti-symmetric tensors, one can use what is known as Hodge-Mori decomposition to perform a similar decomposition. For example, a vector in this case is decomposed as a gradient, a curl, and uh, as an extra uh, a harmonic part. But now we have to impose some boundary conditions on the uh, graded and curled parts. Now, the crucial point is that uh, if we uh, don't impose the boundary conditions, this harmonic part can be absorbed into the graded and curled parts. And because of this, uh, the if we ignore the boundary conditions, the decomposition into gradient and curl is not unique. And we cannot use uh, this to separate or decompose the cosmological perturbation equations, for example. Now, this was the case for an uh, vector. Uh, and actually, for any anti-symmetric tensor, we can use the Hodge-Murray decomposition. But generally for cosmological perturbation theory, we use, uh, we need the decomposition of the um, spatial part of the metric, which is a, a rank two symmetric tensor. So what I do in this work is I use the Hojmer decomposition and I follow a similar strategy uh, in, in a paper of uh, Stroman. And I uh, prove a decomposition theorem for symmetric rank two traceless tensors on Ricci flat manifolds. And then I will try to discuss with you how this decomposition can be used in cosmological perturbation theory and somehow uh, solve some familiar scenarios uh, changes with this new decomposition. But let me first describe what uh, what is a manifold with boundary. So it's uh, defined in a very similar way to a manifold, but uh, it allows uh, vectors of its boundary. Let us consider such a manifold called M uh, with a boundary del M. And we define a metric on it and uh, a corresponding in, uh, induced metric on the boundary. Then what we do is that we uh, decompose all the tensors uh, on the boundary uh, into tangential and normal parts. So tangential part is defined so that it captures only the tangential uh, directions and the normal part is all the rest. So whenever you have a normal part, uh, it's it's described as a n omega. So with these definitions, one has some useful identities. So uh, when you um, exchange a Hodge star with n, you get t with Hodge star and vice versa. And also you see that uh, t 
commutes with the exterior derivative and n commutes with the co-adjoint exterior derivative. So these will be useful for us uh, when we try to use Hojmore decomposition and resulting boundary value problem theorems. So let me now describe Hojmore decomposition. So first I need to discuss harmonic uh, forms and harmonic fields. Now on manifolds with boundary in place of what is known as harmonic forms, forms that satisfies the uh, Laplace equation, it is more useful to define harmonic fields. So these are forms that satisfy um, d kappa equals zero and d dagger kappa equals to zero. And if we also have a, a manifold with trivial cohomology, then um, this, this means that the harmonic uh, field is both exact and coexact. Uh, this is except for rank zero, and for that case, kappa is simply a constant. Now, the Hodge-Morey decomposition uh, is this: uh, any square integrable form on our compact manifold with boundary can be decomposed uniquely as this uh, exact form, an exact part, a coexact part, and the harmonic part. And we have the following boundary conditions for the exact and coexact parts. Uh, now, using this, I would like to show you the decomposition of a symmetric uh, rank two tensors. So, uh, uh, just like Strauman, I start with the decomposition of the divergence of this uh, rank two tensor. So, since it's a vector field, it has the corresponding uh, decomposition. Now what we do is that we try to bring the right-hand side uh, into a form that looks like a divergence of uh, uh, symmetric rank two tensor. So how we do this? Uh, we do this like this. So, um, uh, for a given uh, d dagger beta, so this is uh, one part of the uh, decomposition of the divergence of the T tensor. So for given d dagger beta, one can show that one can find a unique uh, one form called T and D such that d dagger beta is equal to d dagger uh, d T and D and T D and D well, um, um, obeys these conditions. So it's the, the, the dagger T and D equals to zero. That means it's just divergence free and it has these two boundary conditions. These uh, one can prove using the boundary value pro uh, problem theorems in the Schwartz book. Now, if we have a rich flat geometry, one can further show that this D dagger beta can be written as this, a divergence of uh, 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 expression like this. And this is the form we would like to have. Now for the remaining parts, we have the following as uh, um, observation. If we are given a scalar alpha plus sigma, then there exists a unique TT that satisfies this equation and this boundary condition. Now, given a divergence of T, uh, only D alpha plus sigma is fixed. So alpha plus sigma is fixed only up to a constant. But for the ex uh, for the rich flat case, the expression we are going to need um, does not depend on this arbitrary constant. And the expression we are going to need is this, del I, diamond ij and diamond ij i just define as this um, of t of t and as you can see for the richer flat case i uh, i have this expression and thus the uh, arbitrary constant disappears from this expression so the final result is that given a symmetric traces rank 2 tensor 
uh, we can decompose it uniquely as this uh, form. So it has a scalar, vector, and tensor, but all of these has to satisfy these. So the usual uh, traces tensor part is the same, but the, for the other parts, we have these boundary conditions. Now, unfortunately, this decomposition will not be enough for uh, cosmological perturbation theory. We need two more things. First, um, in the equations, we will get expressions like this. Two derivatives of a harmonic scalar and a TT part. But uh, this expression of uh, sigma is itself a TT part. So with the given decomposition, we cannot separate these two parts. So we need a further decomposition. And for this, uh, I propose the following theorem. So given a TT tensor, I can divide it into two. One with the two derivatives of a harmonic part and another part, which is TT, but also satisfies this. Uh, it's symmetrized first derivative is zero. And this part I denote as, as TTA. Now, another thing I will need is this. Uh, suppose that I have a vector and I decompose it using the Hodge-Morin decomposition and the uh, uh, VN part satisfies these conditions. Now, in the uh, cosmological perturbation equations, uh, we will have expressions such as this. And here I will, I will have this type of expressions. Now these two first parts, they are of the types I have described before, but this is not, a part, not of the types I have described in my decomposition theorem. To be so, it needs to satisfy this extra condition. So uh, if you recall, uh, this was the condition needed in my decomposition theorem. But this V uh, N only satisfies this. So for this, one can also show that uh, I can uh, decompose this expression into, uh, again, a tensor decomposition part. But now this scalar part satisfies this extra condition. The vector part is now the same, but still I have a TT part. This part I will not uh, discuss in this talk, but uh, of course it's still in the vector real type. Now uh, I apply all of these into cosmological perturbations. So let me remind you what we do generally for cosmological perturbation theory. We have a FRW space times, and on top of it, we have some perturbations phi, ni, psi, and gamma. Each of these are a scalar, a vector, or a tensor on R3. So we will decompose each of these as this. Scalars will decompose into a T and H part. T has this boundary condition and H is a harmonic. The Ni, uh, I will decompose uh, by the usual Hodge-Morin theorem, but whenever I have this expression, I will use my further decomposition I described. So this is what I showed you before, but now the gradient parts are also added. And gamma ij uh, will be decomposed as I have already told you where I have this second decomposition also. So if I use all of this, then I have the perturbative Einstein equations decomposed as follows. So what do I have here? I have five scalar equations, two vector and one uh, tensor equations. So what I observe here is that my number of equations increase and also type number of types of fields I have increased. Also note that here um, for the scalar parts in some of them, I did not uh, decompose them further. So first three of these can still be decomposed into T and harmonic parts. So this is a bit uh, confusing. So let's uh, now try to consider an um, example scenario. So let us consider the single field inflation. Uh, 
And how does it go with um, new decomposition and non-vanishing boundary conditions? So we will have an additional extra inflaton field. Uh, we will uh, focus on the scale occasions of motion. We choose a gauge where uh, a good number of uh, parts are equal to zero. And then we are left with phi, psi, each of which has a T type and H type parts. And the psi, uh, which is of T type, and the equation of motion are these three equations for those uh, variables. Now, let me focus on the second equation. This let me decompose again into T and H parts. So T is like this, and H is equal to some arbitrary AT field. So I can have such arbitrariness because I'm not imposing vanishing boundary conditions. Now, if I plug these into other equations, I have I get these two equations. So this should be familiar. These are just two copies of mukhanov sasaki equation. The first part is just like the standard scenario. It's, it is the, exactly the same equation and it has vanishing boundary condition on uh, the boundary. But the second part is new. First, it has some harmonic part, this psi h, and uh, it needs to satisfy this uh, somewhat modified mukhanov sasaki equation. Now to solve these equations and try to interpret these, I need to uh, impose the, some more physical boundary conditions and there are more hardships uh, I will discuss next. But let me now, uh, let me now summarize my results. I have uh, proved a new deco decomposition theorem for symmetric rank two tensors. And I showed how cosmological perturbation equations uh, work. And we studied the single infield uh, inflation scenario. Now, for further in investigation, I need to impose some physical boundary conditions. Uh, first, I need to discuss what these are and what are their physicality. And but even if I do that, I also need some other tools. So what are those? For example, to solve the Mukhana Sasaki equation, I cannot the use of Fourier transformation in longer uh, because now I'm on a bounded region and I need Fourier series. But nevertheless, I hope that this investigation opens a path to study cosmological perturbation equations with non-standard boundary conditions and lead to inter interesting insights. Um, thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to your uh, questions.